So hello everyone. Uh, welcome you all to this video. So in this video, we are basically continuing with the series of uh, uh, providing the important stuffs or the important questions of the environmental studies. Okay, the last exam for the fifth sem students. Okay, so I am making this video uh, uh, with keeping in mind the two streams, EC as well as CS stream. Okay, the, these are the basic subject codes for uh, these two streams. And based on uh, these two streams, I am providing the important questions by comparing both of them. Okay, yeah. So I had provided around 70 to 75 questions from each module. Uh, 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 the, in the previous videos, I had discussed with module 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Each video I have done, I have covered each each of the modules. So those have not seen it, so please go and watch it. It's available in our channel. So in this video, we are going to discuss with module 5. Okay. The, uh, sub, uh, the module name is Latest Developments in Environmental Pollution and Mitigation Tools. Okay. So as you know that this is a two credit subject, so you should be having a proper uh, eye on it because uh, uh, this is not basically a one credit subject as you had in the previous exams and all. So this is an objective oriented objective type paper where you would be getting the multiple choice questions. Okay. So I would be guaranteeing you that if you refer these materials which I provide around 70 to 75 questions I have analyzed and provided it to you all. So you could, you could be scoring easily 35 to 40 marks. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I had already provided the module first four modules. So this is the fifth module. So this PDF, um, I would be putting it in the description along with the answers. I would be saving it and providing it to you all. So in this, I'm just going to discuss the questions and the uh, proper answers based on the options provided. Okay. Yeah. So stay tuned. Let us uh, discuss some of the questions. So from module five, there are around uh, uh, 50 questions. Okay. So let us see one by one. So the first question is. Remote sensing uses which of the following waves in its procedure? Okay. The remote sensing basically uses the electromagnetic waves. Next question. The relation between velocity, wavelength and frequency can be given as the basic relation is given as lambda is equal to C by F. Okay. So this is the basic relation between velocity, wavelength and frequency. Which of the following is not a principle of remote sensing? The answer is interaction of energy with satellite. Which among the following waves is having less wavelength range? Okay. The answer is 0 0.03 nanometer. In visible region, the blue light is having a wavelength range of 0.42 to 0.52 micrometer. Which of the following is not a classification of scattering principle? The Faraday scattering is basically a not the classification of the scattering principle. Polar orbiting satellites are generally placed at an altitude range of 700 to 1500 kilometers. Which of the following field is used by the electromagnetic waves? Okay. The, the electric field are basically used by the electromagnetic waves. Which one of the following statement is incorrect regarding to the electromagnetic radiation? Okay. None of the above. All the statements mentioned here are correct. Okay. Uh, the changes in the reflectivity and emissivity with time is called as temporal variation. For interpolation of satellite data used for monitoring dynamic changes that occurs in the Earth's surface, the most suitable orbit for the satellite is Sun synchronous orbit. The altitudinal distance of a geostationary satellite from the Earth is about 36,000 km. The remote sensing includes the gathering of images. GIS stands for Geographic Information System. Okay, so this is the full form of GIS. So this is very important. GIS deals with which kind of data? The GIS deals with the spatial data. Uh, which of the following statements is true about the capabilities of GIS? Okay, the all of the above, all the statements mentioned here are true. That is, GIS is a data capture and preparation. It is used for data capture and preparation. It is used for data management, including storage and maintenance. Data manipulation also can be done using GIS and analysis part. Also the data presentation. So all these statements are true. So the answer is all of the above. By spatial data, we mean data that has positional values. Spatial databases are also known as all of the uh, spatial databases are also known as geo databases. Successful spatial analysis needs all of the above. That is uh, appropriate software, appropriate hardware, and competent user. Okay, all of them. 
electromagnetic radiation all of the above in this case it produces a time varying magnetic field and vice versa it is once generated and remains self propagating and it is capable to travel across space it is true then it consists of magnetic and electric field so the answer is all of the above electromagnetic spectrum contains again all of the above the spectrum of electromagnetic is contains gamma rays uv rays and um, infrared okay the code based gps receivers are generally used for all of the above again it are uh, these are generally used for vehicle tracking land navigation and transport okay next question among the following can be expressed uh, dash can be expressed as an example of hardware component okay so keyboard can be expressed as an example of an hardware component which of the following formats can be used for gis output the answer is gif uh, among the following which do not come under the components of gis compiler which of the following doesn't determine the capability of gis the answer is transferring data which of the following acts a benefit of gis the answer is maintaining geospatial data uh, which among the following is a server based hardware platform of gis the answer is google maps map makers use gis to store use and view the geographical information 30th one the information on in gis is entered and stored as layers the user can use gis to make complex analysis and display maps melting of polar ice is expected to cover a sea a sea level rise of approximately 60 meter global warming potential gwp of a greenhouse gas that is ghg is a factor comparing the global warming impacts of 1 kg of ghg with 1 kg of co2 the term the term b10 implies blending of 10% biodiesel with 90% of conventional diesel okay so this is the meaning of the term b10 the validity period of environmental clearance after the environmental impact assessment eia is least for area developmental projects in environmental assessment study the interpretation and evaluation we should consider all of the above that is we should be considering the uncertainty of possible impacts significance of measured impacts and the comparison of alternatives okay uh, who are responsible for the public consultation process of eia okay the the answer here is state pollution control board and district collector 38th one environmental impact assessment eia is mandatory under which one of the following india legislations the answer is environmental protection act what is eutrophication eutrophication is basically the filling up of water body with aquatic plants due to excessive nutrients in which year eia was started in india eia was started in india uh, in the year 1976 and 77 iso 14000 standards are for the environmental management system which is the first environmental management system standard okay the answer is bs7750 in which year did the current revision of iso14001 get published here the answer is 2015 which one of the following is not within the purview of iso14000 family of standards the answer here is quality management system what is the full form of ngos the full form of ngo is non governmental organizations in which of the following sector ngos are playing an important role the in uh, ngos are playing an info, important role in framing the environmental policy sectors okay the in the environmental policies they, these play a vital which one of the following does not belong to the area of organization evaluation standards in iso 14000 series okay the answer here is environmental labels and declarations which of the following pair of iso 14000 standards fall under the category of environmental management system okay here the answer is iso 14001 and iso 14004
which of the following pair of ISO 14000 standards fall under the category of environmental auditing? Okay, under environmental auditing, ISO 14010 and 14011 fall. Which ISO 14000 series standard refers to the guidelines on environmental performance evaluation? Okay, the answer is. ISO 14031. So, yeah, these were some 48 questions. So, as we can say simply as 50 questions. So, some 50 questions are there from module 5, which are very, very important, which I've considered uh, considering both the streams. So, yeah, please go and watch these videos. Okay, I have uh, done my job by providing some important stuff. Now, it's your job to access these PDFs and try to learn these because I would be guaranteeing you that if you already study these things, you would be easily scoring around uh, at least 30 marks. Okay. So I had provided some 70 to 75 questions from the first four modules and 50 questions from module five. So please go, go and access the PDF from the description. Go through it once, study all of them. Okay. Try to understand the options and try to study it. Okay. Also some model, model paper also is provided for that. If time permits, I'm going to provide the solutions for that as well. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. So from each module, I've tried to cover some of the very important stuff. You can consider this as a, some sort of a passing package as well. So go through all of these, try to study all the best for your exams guys. Okay. So this is the last exam do well and the fifth sem would be ending now. Okay. So now next comes the sixth sem where you would be uh, uh, having to do some more works and more studies and more co-curricular activities and you should be trying to improve your skills now. Okay. The skill sets should be improving from now and you should be facing the mock allotments as well, mock tests of uh, in mock interviews and all at the end of the semester. That's all. Thank you.